Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now the oil field servicing giant at SLB, which was formerly known as Schlumberger, is pursuing expansion in Russia and that's despite the withdrawal of major competitors following the onset of the conflict in Ukraine in 2022. And that's according to the Financial Times. Now, SLB is an oil equipment servicing company that specializes in the manufacture, repair and maintenance of equipment used in the extraction and transportation of crude oil and gas. Now, the FT reports that SLB has not only continued to provide equipment in Russia, but it's registering new trademarks, signing new contracts and is seeking new employees. Now, while some Russian oil exports are subject to Ukraine related sanctions, policy makers in the United States and the European Union have not imposed comprehensive restrictions on oil field services in Russia. Now, this is due to concerns that such measures would stifle the global fossil fuel supply and drive up prices. And of course, that's not something that they want in an election year in the US. Now, the FT's reported that between August and December 2023, SLB imported over 20 million worth of equipment into Russia. Now, these deliveries were made despite the company having made a pledge in July not to uh, to halt shipments of products and technology into Russia. Now, the oil field servicing giant got this imported products from countries including China, India and Kazakhstan. Now, the goods supplied include cabling and chemicals, which could be subject to controls if exported from the EU, as all goods are, consider are considered dual use, as in could have military purpose as well as a civilian one, are banned. Of course, that pretty much covers everything from nuts and bolts, screwdrivers, spark plugs to computer chips and mobile phones. Now, since December, the oil field uh, services company has posted more than 1000 job advertisements for positions ranging from drivers to chemists to geologists and uh, drilling repair uh, consultants. Now, given the low level of unemployment in Russia, which is currently 2.4 percent, they, like all companies, are going to have very difficulties finding new staff. Now, in 2023, the Russian operations of Slomberger generated 5% of its 33.1 billion in revenues, so around 1.7 billion of revenues generated in Russia are not exactly loose change. Now, the company's profits in Russia also increased fourfold in 2023 to over $600 million compared to 2022. That's according to Vedemoste. Now, the report cited an analyst of SLB's financial results that sh showed the company was benefiting from the government's push for more efficiency uh, and import substitution in the oil and gas sector. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you. And by the way, thank you for just for watching. Now, SLB or Slumberger's main rivals, which were the Texas-based Halliburton, um, and the Houston-based uh, <coughs> Baker Hughes ceased operations in Russia in 2022. That followed a significant exodus of uh, Western firms. Now, it's really significant if you believe the publicity, of course. I mean, SLB stated that it created, uh, ceased new investment in technology and deployment, but it was going to continue with its existing activities in compliance with international laws and sanctions. Now, on the technology front, there's been a new raft of technologies developed in Russia and import substitution that are superior to the West. I've no doubt that SLB is adapting and using these locally produced technologies and equipment. I mean, for example, Russia has new technologies in the field of hydraulic fracturing or fracturing, fracking as it's known, that are superior to those that are uh, developed in the US. Now, in March, they had an interview with the CEO of, uh, of SLB, Oliver de Lepeche. He said that the company does not intend to leave Russia, despite pressure from Western politicians, etc., as it has long-term commitments to both its employees and its customers. 
Now, following the EU and US embargoes on Russian oil, Russia started exporting its oil to countries in Asia, Africa, with China and India being its top customers. It's also become a major exporter of petrol and diesel around the world, particularly to countries like Brazil and other members of the, the BRICS. So despite all the rhetoric by politicians and column entries by the media, the Russian oil and gas sector not only continues, but continues to thrive, grow and prosper. Now, the attitude of SLB is actually different from the politicians in Washington, which have said they will continue to impose sanctions against the Russian energy sector and related infrastructure. And that's according to the US Deputy Energy Secretary Jeffrey Payet. He says, we are going to continue to tighten the screws and continue to impose sanctions on a wide range of companies involved in the development of key energy projects, as well as future energy projects and related infrastructure. The Pike said this at an energy security conference at the Center for Strategic Initiatives in Washington. He also stated that sanctions will apply to all enterprises and companies involved in the procurement of materials and technologies for future energy projects in Russia. However, Pyatt, who was the US ambassador to Ukraine, when uh, Victoria Fick, the EU Newlands point person in the USA's CIA-led mainland coup that overthrew the president of the Ukraine. So his statement seems to have been ignored by SLB and a lot of others. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of action uh, of the US working on companies in Russia who are ignoring his rhetoric. And it seems like his policies are all just going wrong. I mean, Russia's Rostat has confirmed that for the second year in a row, Russian oil production is at a record level. And that's despite the cuts that it's had to make as part of its OPEC plus agreements, which indicates the resilience of its oil and gas sector to the Western sanctions. Now, at the same time, Russian oil exports have recovered both in quantity and in price terms. Now, according to Roland Smith, who's an oil and gas analyst at Mos Moscow's broker credit services, he says that Russia is much more independent in the oil field services than is actually commonly believed. Well, that's not unusual because pretty much everything that's commonly believed in the West turns out to be absolute rubbish. I mean, in 2023, Russia drilled oil wells at a total depth of 28,100 kilometers, which is close to the last year's record, which was in 2022, which is a record for the whole entire period after the collapse of the Soviet Union. I mean, the production in 2022 was to over 30,000 kilometers of drilling of depth, and that's from uh, analysts from Klogpart and Yakov and Partners. And all this is happening despite Western sanctions, both on technology, exports, price caps, etc. I mean, in particular, in 2022, the West introduced this fancily titled Comprehensive Restrictions on the Export of Equipment, Technologies and Services for the Energy Sector in Russia. And following this, the US imposed sanctions against dozens of companies producing drilling equipment, developing new production technology in order to limit Russia's future production capabilities. I mentioned that two of the world's largest oil fuel companies, Halliburton and Baker Hughes, sold their operations and exited the country. Now, Weatherford International, like SLB, said they're going to continue to operate in, in Russia in compliance with the sanctions. But as Victor Cantona said, he says, leading crude, he's a leading crude oil analyst at Kepler, he says, the shares of those companies, or rather the Russian subsidiary, were sold to the local management. So they've retained all the know-how, experience and knowledge they've accumulated over the years. So there's nothing much really going to change. I mean, so much so that there's no change whatsoever. And all the US sanctions have achieved is a few more column inches in the, the Western press. So Russia's oil industry continues to thrive, SLB continues to make money, and everybody in Russia is happy. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you've enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website, seobricksinsight.com, by clicking on the screen. Don't forget the comments. Please comment. I love to talk to you. I love interacting with you all. So please come back to me as soon as possible.